Welcome to the Manitoba Ag Days podcast, featuring speakers from our 2017 event. This podcast features Glenn Blahey of the Canadian Agricultural Safety Association talking about being grain safe. Good morning. Welcome to, uh, to Ag Days and, uh, and welcome to, uh, to some discussions on farm safety. Um, I'd just like to share with you uh, a little bit about uh, what we are doing uh, with regard to grain safety. Um, uh, I'm with the Canadian Agricultural Safety Association. We're a national non-for-profit uh, organization and uh, we are striving to, to have a Canada where no one is hurt farming. Uh, we certainly want to, to get that message across to, to all producers and to also engage the, the personnel that service the ag industry and provide support to it to, uh, to carry that message forward. Uh, there is a, a dramatic increase in the number of incidents involving uh, grain handling where people are becoming entrapped and exposed to the hazards associated with that. Um, grain is larger and larger volumes of grain are being stored on Canadian farms and that grain is being moved at a, at a much faster volume than it used to be. Uh, the, the fill and unload speeds of uh, grain handling equipment uh, has increased immensely uh, and in that increase in handling rate and volume stored, one of the challenges that occurs is that grain goes out of condition and if you have a small bin where the grain goes out of condition that's one problem. If you have a large storage structure where the grain goes out of condition and solidifies, it becomes quite a, a different challenge. If you look at the image on your right, um, that is, uh, is what a truckload of wheat looks like that was harvested at 25% moisture and sat in the truck for 12 hours. After 12 hours, that wheat, when the wheat came out of the combine, it flowed nice and freely into the, uh, into the truck. Uh, after sitting for 12 hours, it became a solid mass. They opened the, uh, the, the chute at the bottom of the hopper to unload the truck, and all that went out was a column, and now they're faced with uh, dealing with that solid mass of grain. Uh, in this case, the um, the person is holding a, a long rod or pipe and he's trying to break that wheat down. The challenge is, is that he is standing on the surface of that semi-solid mass and when that grain lets go at the bottom of the bin, at the bottom of that trailer, a truck trailer, where is he going to go? And how deep in that grain is he going to be submerged? If you look over on the other side, uh, the other image, uh, again, uh, that is a very large grain storage bin. Uh, they started unloading it uh, through the bottom sumps and they ended up with columns of grain left. Uh, that column of grain, that tower of grain, uh, stands probably about 30 feet high. You're not going to get in there with a loader, you're not going to get in there with a, a piece of powered equipment. How are you going to break that tower of grain down? And if someone thinks that they're going to go down with a, a shovel or a pick or, or some rods and start poking at it and it will nicely and smoothly come down, they're mistaken because that pile of grain will come down like an avalanche and all it takes is about eight inches of grain on top of your body to suffocate you. So grain handling is certainly a challenge and, uh, and producers sometimes uh, try to improvise and, and work around it. Uh, one of the challenges is getting into the storage structures and again if you take a look at, at these couple of images, you know, how do you get into that bin but more importantly how do you get out? Uh, the one with the ladder leaned up against the side of the bin by the access port, I can understand how you might be able to be a bit of an acrobat and get off the ladder into the bin to do whatever you have to do, but how are you going to crawl out of that bin and get onto the ladder? Uh, and, uh, and the other image is an interesting one. Uh, it, for some reason there is a platform with no guard railing or anything at the very top of the bin. Uh, and what that platform is used for is, is anyone's guess, but it's a challenge. And speaking of challenges, once you get into a bin, there are mechanical components in most bins. And, uh, and how do you manage those components? 
How many of you have ever used a grain vac? Where is the control mechanism for the grain vac? At the intake end or outside on the, uh, on the operating machine? It's outside on the operating machine. If you get into trouble with that grain vac, if your arms get sore and you inadvertently place the nozzle of, or the intake of that grain vac down at your feet, it's going to draw the grain out from underneath you and suck you down. Are you going to be able to lift that intake nozzle up quickly enough so it doesn't suck you down further into the grain? Are you going to be able to shut off that grain vac? And the same holds true for bin sweeps and, uh, and other mechanical components uh, in the bins. Uh, if as you're entering, entering, as you're emptying the bin, uh, the last little bits, have you lifted the grating off the sumps at the bottom of that bin? Have you left those augers exposed? Uh, what happens if you get a little too close to that uncovered sump? Are you going to get entangled in the auger mechanism? And again, where is the control to turn off that bin auger, whether it's a bin sweep or it's a sump auger, the control is outside. So if you're working alone, you've got problems. So, you know, when you're up to your neck uh, in grain, it's a little bit too late to ask and say, what did I do wrong? And so, although there are ways of dealing with the mechanical components and the physical components of the grain we handle, what we have to remember is we have to deal with and manage that human factor. And, and throughout the morning, uh, you're going to hear from, uh, from other people that have been involved in, in ag-related incidents uh, talk about what their experiences were and what their issues were. What we need to know and understand, and we have to communicate to everyone that works with us on the farm as well as lives with us on the farm, because if we take a look at the number of incidents that have occurred, it's not just the people working, but so oftentimes there are bystanders that become involved in serious incidents uh, involving grain handling, and it's important that we communicate clearly with everyone in terms of, of not getting caught, not getting into trouble with the grain handling system. Uh, so you need to have a game plan. You have to have basic working rules and responsibilities. You have to make sure that people are not working alone if at all possible, if they must go and work alone, that you have some system to check up on them on a regular basis and that frequency of checking on them really is tied back to how dangerous the work is. And when people say, no, nah, it'll never happen to me, uh, all they have to do is pause for a moment and think back about all the people they've seen that have experienced injuries, all the people they know, and know that it can be happening. It can happen. If it does happen, what do you have in place for emergency procedures? Uh, is there a landline? If someone's going to be calling for emergency, do they know how to describe where the property is? Uh, the, the system has changed immensely. Now when you call 911, uh, you are calling a call center uh, that may be two or three hundred kilometers away from you. They don't recognize landmarks. They don't recognize farm names. They have to give specific coordinates. So make sure that you have an emergency plan in place and most importantly within that family operation is make sure that you keep work separated from play. The farm is not a playground. Uh, the grain bins, piles of grain, truckloads of grain are not playgrounds. They are not places for children to play and, uh, and uh, we have to avoid tragedy. What we have to understand is we both have a, a physical loss that occurs when an incident occurs where, you know, we ha emotionally we lose. We lose family members, we change the way our families function because of serious injuries, because of disabilities. But farm safety is also an economic issue. It's a business risk management issue. And it's a very expensive business risk management. If you stop and think about it, if a principal operator of a farm is uh, got a short-term injury or illness that doesn't require medical treatment, uh, there's a cost of about $700 to that farm's economy because that person isn't there making decision. But as soon as that becomes a more critical, more serious injury where they're hospitalized, that economic burden that, on that farm goes up to about $10,000. A permanent disability, 143000 
and a fatality, about 275,000. Those aren't bills that the farm is going to get. Those are simply losses in economics directly attributable to that farm. And uh, I often ask producers, what's your return on investment in your farming operation? Uh, what's your profit margin? And you know, the number's all over the place, but for ease of calculation, if you say you have a 10% profit margin, uh, if you've had an employee hospitalized, your farm has lost about $10,000 in productivity. To recoup that $10,000 loss that you've experienced at a 10% profit margin, you have to earn an extra $100,000 on your farm. And raising an extra $100,000 on your farm is not easy. Uh, so with respect to being grain safe, what we've done is we have are having a, a mobile training unit built that uh, we are taking around Western Canada to educate farmers about the hazards associated with grain safety. If you go over to the Westman Place Arena, uh, you can see demonstrations uh, every 90 minutes or so showing how quickly, it's about eight seconds from the time a person is standing on the surface of the grain to the time they're up to their waist in grain. And then the procedures involved for uh, extricating and getting that person out. Um, so we're going to have that as a, available as a, an interactive display. We're also going to be making that trailer available to uh, fire departments across Western Canada to learn about grain extrication and safety. And uh, we certainly are going to be providing a lot of online educational resources to producers. Uh, we're very appreciative to our corporate sponsors that made the Be Grain Safe program possible. And, uh, and I certainly have to recognize and acknowledge uh, the Manitoba canola growers. Uh, they were the first producer organization to step forward and say, yes, we need this education, we need this information. And they made a, a very significant financial commitment to running our Bee Grain Safe program. And they really provided the catalyst for the rest of our corporate sponsors. Uh, and, uh, and what is interesting on a corporate sponsor level is we have corporate sponsorship from the big companies like G3 and, uh, and CPS, but we also have personal private donations of, of $100 and of $300 and, and varying amounts from individuals who recognize the value and certainly uh, we encourage you to come out and see our trailer, talk to us a little more about it and uh, I would be happy to answer any questions you may have about our Be Grain Safe program. Uh, I just want to point out uh, two folks sitting up in the back there, Morag, Jeff, give us a wave. They are your Manitoba farm safety people. They are the people that, that you can reach out to with your farm safety questions in Manitoba, and, uh, and we're very pleased to be able to work with them. So thank you very much. Thanks for listening. We'll see you at Manitoba Ag Days 2018 from January 16th to 18th.